Hello, Nikolai Markovich from Echo Lake Technologies, echolaketech.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use custom states to add some user experience functionality to your app. And right here, I'm going to do a quick uh, demo. I've got these three icons here, and then I've got three groups. Uh, so I've just kind of made up uh, the groups here, and it's users, and then we've got chat, and then setup. Now you can see as I move from the different icons, I get the words that pop up underneath users and chat. And when I click on one, the word chat stays there and the color changes. So I can move the cursor around and, and so it gives you some visual cues as to what group is being used. So right now I'm in, on users group, go to setup and now I'm setup and so forth. So let's dive right in and see how to set this up. Okay, so right now I've got the three icons, and the icons are basically the standard uh, bubble icons right here. So you get a bunch of different choices here, so pick whatever ones are relevant for your app. So I've got these three here. I've also got three groups set up here, and uh, the default on these groups um, is, where is it, that they are hidden. So. Element is visible on page load, so these are clicked off. The default, so when you do a group, you'll see the default value for that is that these elements um, are visible on page load. And the reason why we want to click this off for the three different um, groups here is because we're going to be using custom states and uh, we want to make sure that the custom states behave appropriately and that the right um, group is showing at the right time. So I've just, again, simple groups here um, that I've created and put a little text field inside of them just to so we can see which, which group we're looking at. Now, here's the real uh, trick, if you will, um, in this whole design. And I'm, right now I just clicked on this page. It's called MISC. So... Just double click on it anywhere and then we want to go here to the element inspector and basically I've got this custom state on here I've called it button and it's of type text um, there's no default value though I guess I, I could have um, done that and actually I'll probably do that in a, in a little bit here I've done it on page load but I'll probably come back and uh, if I remember and do it as a default value as well but basically to add a custom state just do whatever you want and type text like that and you can have all these different values as well i do have other videos that get a little bit more detail on custom states and i'll put a pointer uh, to those uh, to the video uh, down below so this is it button type text for our custom state and basically we come over here to the icon and we have these conditionals so what we do here is when this icon is hovered and misc button, so this is a custom state, misc being the page, and then button, the custom state, is not users, okay? And users is the, this icon here. Um, then what we have is the icon color is going to be this kind of, I don't know what color it is, orange, -ish, orange color, I guess. So uh, again, when it's hovered and the misc button is not users. The reason being is, I'm just gonna jump over here. Now, um, chat is selected here, so it's green, but I wanna be able to have the color change on these other icons when I move the cursor over it. So that's basically what this uh, condition does here. And then what we have is when the misc button is users, make it green. Okay, so basically on this example, chat is selected, so chat is, is green. And that's all it basically does. Now, these states are um, case sensitive. So if I come over here and just for a moment and make these lowercase users, refresh my screen. Okay, so I'm clicking on it. I click on this, turns green as expected. This does not, and the reason being, again, case sensitive, spelling, everything. So make sure that when you do set up these custom states and you put in the values, uh, make sure that you do get them right, just to go back and show you. Okay, just like that. 
and we are back in business. It's working as expected. And basically, I have this for all of the different uh, icons here. For this one, I use the word chat. And then for this other one, setup. Okay, so that's basically how you set up the icons to either turn orange or uh, solid um, green when the, uh, the value is, is selected, when the button is pressed. Now what I've also done on here is for these three different texts, I have them as similar misc button, so this is our custom state is users, um, or it's or this icon here. Let's see, I thought it would pop up the little icon. When this icon here is hovered, then make this element visible. Similar here, chat. There we go. So when the misc button is uh, the value for the custom state is chat or this icon is hovered, then this is visible, and likewise here. Okay, so this is basically how we go and have the text show when I hover, and when I click on it, it stays solid, just like that. Okay, now let's move over to our uh, groups. Again, the groups, nothing too fancy with these here. Uh, it's really a lot of the magic in this is, is setting up these conditionals and using the uh, custom state. So this one, uh, misc button, so this should be familiar at this point, is set up, then make this visible. And I'll just go to another one, when chat, and then for users. So that's basically it. Now I also want to go back here and show that these are element is visible and page load is checked off. So again, these texts, you want to make sure that you've got these all checked off, and this will give you the behavior that you're looking for here. Okay, now let's go to the workflows. And so when, let's start here, when this one is checked, I'm going to set the value, so the element, so st set state, and basically for setting state, it's element actions. So all I do is just click over here, element actions, set state, misc, the custom state name is button, and then what, you know, the value, whatever the value may be. And let's see, for this one, it is users. Again, it's case sensitive, spelling, and so forth, so make sure you get that uh, correct or it won't work. I've basically done the same for these other ones here. So for this button here, the, the use or the setup one, value setup, and then for this one, chat. So that's basically it to for these buttons. So click on chat, go to the workflow, chat, just like that. Now I've got on page loaded. I want to have a default value. So all I do is I set on page load, and to get to page load here, it's basically general pages loaded. And that's how you get it. So when page is loaded, I've got this step in here. It's basically just setting the state. Similar to what we did over on these other ones when we press the button, we just do it on page load. Now what I'm gonna do is, so one of the nice things that Bubble recently added um, to the platform is you can do a disable platform or platform disable workflow. I'm going to click on that. You can kind of see it gets grayed out. So I'm going to do that. Now when I load the screen here, okay, it doesn't have any any default values. Okay, so I do this. The default value should be user. If I go back here, click that, enable it. And user should come up as green, okay, as expected. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to disable it, and I want to show you how I can go and copy this. And I'm going to go back here and double click. I'm on misc. Got the inspector, the default value. I'm going to type in users here, do a page load, refresh the page. And there it is. So this effectively does exactly the same thing as on page load. 
So I've, again, I've got this disabled. So it's not executing on this page load. What it is doing is it's going and it's taking this value. Now I could go in here and change this to chat. And now chat should come up as green. There it is. So just another example to show you that you can either go and use the page load and set up the, the default value for the custom state when the page is loaded, or you can come right in here in the element inspector, again, the little I under the MISC. Uh, the page is, this page is called MISC, and then I can change the value right here. So I'm just going to go put it back to where it was, refresh, and then it's going to come up as green for users. So that's it. I um, wanted to show you just a quick demo on how to set this up. I think this is a very powerful way from a user experience perspective so that you can give a lot of visual cues to your users with colors and wording and so forth. Um, and I think this is a very nice addition, again, to the Bubble platform. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them uh, down below. If you like this video, I do appreciate your thumbs up. And if you um, uh, want, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, I do have uh, regularly posted videos, and so you'll get notified by YouTube um, if you subscribe to the channel. And with that, uh, thank you for watching to the end, and I'll see you on the next video.